Good morning, y'all. Happy Wednesday. It's hump day. Um, it is September 9th, 2020. God will change you. Many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. Proverbs 19.21 Even though you may still be operating in old habits, you still have hope of change. But you can't change yourself. God will change you if you seek him with your whole heart. Don't be in a hurry for God to finish working in your life. We want everything to be done instantly, but God is not interested in our schedule. The enemy may direct, misdirect our plans, but God's plans don't get misdirected, and he has a unique plan for you. Seek God's plan for your life. Stay on fire, red hot, zealous. Pursue his purpose for you with every ounce of your energy you have. There's nothing in this world that is worth seeking more. Nothing is more worth than seeking God's love and eternal life. But we need to start with spiritual discipline. Just as we need natural disciplines in our lives, such as discipline concerning work, appetites, finances, and so on, we also need spiritual disciplines such as prayer, Bible study, giving, serving others, and confessing God's word aloud. Turn this down just a little bit. As we discipline ourselves to do these things, they will become habits. Then we will see good results just as we see good results from any other discipline applied over a period of time. Discipline doesn't produce immediate joy, but it is an investment that will pay great dividends in due time. Afterwards, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness that is right standing with God and a lifestyle and attitude that seeks conformity to God's will and purpose. And you can see more in Hebrews 12, 11. Discipline is wisdom because a wise person always does now what he or she will be satisfied with later on in his, his or her life. And just like our parents who disciplined us while growing up, and just as parents, we discipline our children, God disciplines us. He disciplines us for our good so that we may share his holiness. And in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is, grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition, have passed away. Behold, new things have come, because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Amen. But all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, making us acceptable to him and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that by our example we might bring others to him. That is, that is God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them, but canceling them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation, that is, restoration to favor with God. We are all ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making his appeal through us. We, as Christ's representatives, plead with you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. He made Christ, who knew no sin, to sin, to be sin on our half, so that in him we would become that righteousness of God, that is, we would be made acceptable to him and placed in a right relationship with him by his gracious love and kindness. Isn't that beautiful? That is so beautiful. Willingness to change brings victory. Someone might say, I've always had a bad temper. I can't help the way I am. My father had a bad temper too. These excuses for bad behavior could go on endlessly. People use excuses to justify the way they are. Such excuses are an attempt to resist change. Not facing truth about ourselves and making excuses is part of Satan's deceptive influence. For example, he might tell us that we're not rude. We're just speaking the truth as we see it. He convinces us that the other people are at fault because they're just too sensitive. 
We don't feel responsible and we think we're okay. Having convinced us that we don't have to change, the devil has won a battle in our lives. Don't let him win. When I went through a period of extreme negativity, we all go through it. I never thought of myself as being negative. I was just being realistic. I could see the weaknesses and the problems of others, and I was quite happy to show them how they could overcome. I thought I was being helpful. It never occurred to me in my prideful state that people wanted acceptance and encouragement, not judgment and criticism. We need to realize that God is able to deliver us when we have ungodly attitudes or display bad behaviors rooted in ungodly thoughts. We start the Christian life as new creations, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things have passed away. Our past is wiped away. Freedom begins when we face our problems without excuses. Yes, I'm negative, but I am sorry and I want to change. We do not have to remain the way we are now and in the future. With God's help, our minds can be renewed according to the Word of God, and the better our thinking becomes, the better our attitude will be. The most difficult part may be to face the truth about ourselves and say to God, I'm a negative person and I have no excuse. You have tried to change yourself in the past, but it didn't work. Now you can begin to win the battle over Satan's stronghold by facing truth, asking for God's help, and studying his word in the area that gives you problems. God's word is filled with power that will set you free. Holy God, forgive me for my negative thinking. Help me so that Satan has no stronghold over my mind. Please destroy every negative aspect of my thinking. Through Jesus, my Lord, amen. And then, generosity defeats selfishness. We can all be a little selfish. Selfish, sometimes. We are all creatures of habit, but bad habits can be broken and replaced with good ones. If we focus on developing good habits, the bad ones won't have any room to operate in our lives. One good habit we can form is that of being generous. People being who... People, being people who continually reach out to others to make their lives better. Spending some time daily thinking about what you can do for others. I admit that I was a selfish, self-centered person for much of my life. We don't have to learn to be selfish. We are born with that ability. Thankfully, through the new birth in Jesus Christ, we can change. Jesus died so that we no longer have to live, in, live to and for ourselves. That is good news. We can be free from selfishness. We can be delivered from constantly thinking, what about me? What have, we won't have to fear that our needs won't be met because God will always take care of our needs when we are attentive to the needs of others and when our attitude towards them is generous. Amen. So, keep the faith, break the bad habits, and be generous. That's my two cents for today. <laughs> Two cents for today. Keep the faith. Break the bad habits. Break the bad habits, y'all. We all have bad habits. Mine is smoking and I'm trying to break the habit. And I, and I pray I'm generous. I try to be generous and put others first. Um, I read in Matthew this morning that you're not supposed to pray publicly because you might be seen as a hypocrite. If y'all could see my heart right now, y'all would see Jesus because he lives in my heart. Him, God, and the Holy Spirit. They all live in my heart. And when I pray, I pray from the heart, not from what's up here. Um, so, I'm not a hypocrite. I'm doing this because it is helping me. And I'm not being selfish by doing this. I'm helping me. And I pray that I'm getting the word out there about Jesus so that it is helping you in some way, shape, or form. And that you can continue to share and spread God's love through you. But anyway, I'm going to say a prayer. Because this world needs prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for another day. I thank you for this time we have spent with you this morning. I pray that it touches the hearts of those who needed it. And I needed it, Lord. I needed to hear your word, read your word. God, I pray for everyone, each and every one, and their loved ones and around the world. I pray for this nation. 
I pray that you can just heal us all, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, for, for Jesus who died on the cross. And thank you for healing the land. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. So I love y'all. Have a happy hump day. Please remember to keep Georgia in your prayers. Um, she is running a fever this morning. Um, and I pray that she feels better today. So keep her in your prayers, Lord. And y'all's prayers. Thank you so much for watching this morning. Love y'all.